Colombia. Columbia. Mm. This is going to be a little bit different from our regular uploads. This and our next video is not going to be in chronological order, but instead the next two videos we release will be recapping our six weeks in Colombia with a bunch of helpful tips and tricks, as well as some budget updates. So if you're a long-term chronological vlog viewer, feel free to skip this one and the next one because it might not be very interesting to you. But if you're here for information on how to travel Colombia, buckle up buddy boy. Let's <laughs> But if you're here for information on how to travel Colombia, you've come to the right place. This video will serve as your ultimate Colombian travel guide. It's got itinerary details where we break down the 11 places we saw in Colombia, detailing things like how we get there, what we ate, where we stayed, all the good stuff. We've also put together a comprehensive Google Maps guide that you can download and use while you're on the ground in Colombia and 50 locations on it with all of our notes saying what you should order at certain restaurants, where we stayed at certain accommodations, as well as a bunch of places we wish we visited. It's really cool because you can click into each little spot and you see all of our notes about that location as well as any links we have, the videos we made of that location so you can see what you're in for before you get there. Any downloads will really help us continue making this travel content. But we have also put together a completely free travel guide which comes as a PDF and we've linked in the description below. Okay, let's kick this off with some countrywide tips. 10. Isn't it nine? I don't know, we'll see. Money. Colombia uses the Colombian peso, which is great, but it is pretty volatile. We noticed since we got here, our Australian dollars converting to the Colombian peso has changed a lot and not in a good way for us. So just make sure you're double checking those conversions every so often. More and more restaurants and accommodations do accept cards, but there's generally at least a one to 5% surcharge. If you're in places like Chalon on a Rosario Islands tour, that can shoot all the way up to 20%. So make sure to have some cash on you at all times. Cash is still definitely the most preferred option, so break your big bills when you have a chance. Really important to do this because a lot of the smaller food vendors particularly don't have that much change, so it's good to be able to give them the exact amount of money. It also can be a good idea to withdraw as much as you can in one go and kind of stash them around in your suitcase and your backpack and leave that at the hostel, only bring out what you need. We did this because ATM withdrawal fees can be quite hefty, up to like 25,000 pesos. So if you can withdraw more at once, you're paying that fee less times. Some areas of Colombia, depending on the city, can be safer than others. Safety. The perception of South America being a pretty dangerous place in our opinion, isn't very accurate. I don't see much difference between the main city of Bogota and like the safety of a city like Paris. Yeah, there's always gonna be good and bad in every city. And I actually read this article not long ago that compared Colombian cities to their US counterparts and found that the Colombian cities had a lower crime rate. Obviously that does come with a caveat. We try and be as smart as we can. Go out with your brain switched on, make smart decisions. Don't go out late at night. If there's a dark alleyway with a couple of dodgy looking people, maybe walk a different way. <laughs> But so far, we haven't really found a city in Colombia that we wouldn't recommend. SIM cards. This one's a bit of a no-brainer. You're gonna need a SIM card. They are everywhere in the major cities and pretty affordable too. We picked up two SIM cards. They were 20 Australian dollars each and we got 25 gig to use over the full month. We were quite worried about being able to buy these, like whether or not they'd be readily available. But honestly, you do not need to stress about that if you're going to Bogota or any other of the big cities. Not only are they sold in like little delis and shops like that, but there's people walking around the street selling them. So you're gonna get one if you want one. <laughs> We went with Claro, which is one of the biggest ones in Colombia, and we had no problem with service anywhere. Travel between cities. The cheapest way by far to get around Colombia is without a doubt the bus network. We use buses pretty much between every city we wanted to go to, and we never had a problem 
just showing up to the bus station and saying where we wanted to go. That being said, the bigger overnight buses we tended to book in advance. Drinking water. The general rule in Colombia is the smaller the city, the worse the tap water is going to be. The bigger cities like Bogota, Medellin, Cali, all the tap water is safe and the locals tend to make it quite obvious and they tell you this is safe to drink. I would say just Google it just for self assuredness and to be 100% that the water is safe to drink. And if you're not 100% sure, buy some bottled water because it's not worth the risk. Yeah, that's not expensive. No. Speaking Spanish and Google Translate. Knowing some Spanish would definitely make your travels a lot easier. We came into the country basically knowing nothing. Not basically, we knew nothing. We knew how to say gracias and hola and that's it. And we still aren't that great. But if you can memorize at least a few words or a few sentences, you will get by okay. If you can't memorize anything, that is okay. Google Translate does come to the rescue a lot of the time. You can actually download the Spanish language so you can use it offline too. So. Even if you're out of Wi-Fi or you haven't got your SIM card yet, you're still able to communicate those basic messages at least. We do try to brush up on our Spanish and listen to a bit of an audio podcast when we're like in the shower and things like that. Emily's doing well, I'm not. <laughs> Ubers and taxis. Technically speaking, Uber is actually illegal in Colombia, even though you can use it because they've come up with a loophole where you're hiring a private driver, not an Uber. <laughs> but because of this, some of the drivers might ask you to sit in the front seat, which we did find unusual to begin with until we realized what was happening. Taxis, if they're metered, are everywhere and a really good option as well. If you find a good driver, no issues whatsoever, and it's probably gonna be pretty similar to Uber. The issue is that sometimes you have taxi drivers that aren't completely honest with you and end up charging more than they should be charging. That happened in our very, very first arrival into Bogota and we tried to use Uber or Didi ever since. Time of year to travel. The best time of year to travel in Colombia is the dry season, typically from December to March. That being said, Colombia's weather is pretty okay. Like any time of year, we haven't had any issues. The, the main thing you need to be aware of for the weather is the difference between Bogota and places like Cartagena on the coast. <laughs> Very, very different. We were like dodging puddles in Bogota and then we went to Cartagena and was sweating nonstop. For reference, we were traveling through Colombia through June and a bit of July, which is sort of the end of the rainy season and we really didn't see any rain at all. I think there was one day we got rained out. Insurance, visas, entry requirements, and yellow fever. As an Australian or an American, you can stay in Colombia up to 90 days without a visa. To get in, you do have to show onward travel. Even though ours wasn't checked, you should have it or have some sort of form that says you're going somewhere, even if it's not technically true. <laughs> we use a service that gives you a ticket on a plane. The yellow <laughs> fever vaccine is recommended when you're traveling Colombia. We actually didn't have it for the entire time we were there, but you can get it for free in Bogota Airport, Medellin, Cartagena, and Santa Marta. So if you're visiting any of those places, we'll link below a blog that sort of details how to get it in each of those cities. We just kept putting it off and we didn't get it. <laughs> We're definitely not celebrating that we didn't have it. It was pretty silly to not get it when it's free. Yeah. Uh, we do have it now, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Airbnbs or hotels? Throughout North America, we were using Trusted House Sitters, which is an incredible service and we love it to death. <laughs> but in South America, those opportunities are few and far between. So. We've gone to booking.com and Airbnb. The interesting thing about Colombia is that you never really have one that's gonna be better than the other. Whereas we found in Europe, it was like, okay, we're in France, Airbnb is the way to go, no matter where you go. But here, really, it changes city to city and drastically, so you need to be checking out both. Let's break down our itinerary. We started our trip by flying into Bogota, which is Colombia's capital city and sits at around 2,600 meters above sea level. We didn't notice the altitude too much until we went up Montserrati and whew, was it hard to walk up a hill. <laughs> we chose Bogota really only because it was the cheapest. We didn't really care where we were flying into because we knew we were spending quite a lot of time in Colombia, but Bogota, definitely was the cheapest for us. When choosing where to stay, there's generally two areas that people will recommend, and that's Chapinero, which is sort of a more upscale, high rises, big malls, that sort of vibe, or there is La Candelaria, which is the old historic center of Bogota. It's a lot busier, a lot noisier, but it's also so beautiful. That's where we ended up staying. We got an Airbnb and it was only, I think about $30 Australian mm. per night. We ended up spending 10 nights there because it was so cheap and we wanted to catch up on some work. <laughs> You definitely don't need 10 nights if you're just traveling Bogota, maybe two or three, you'd be able to see and do everything you wanna see and do, but we were just doing some work. Speaking of those things to do, the list is 
pretty long. We started our time with a free walking tour and we highly suggest doing that. No matter which city you go to, if you start with a free walking tour, you get your bearings and know what's next. We also went to the Gold Museum. It was supposed to cost 5,000 pesos per person to get in, but for us it was free for some reason. <laughs> I did think this was gonna be a bit of a tourist trap, but honestly, it's a really good museum. All of the exhibits are really well done and it's just so crazy how much gold there is. <laughs> Obviously, climbing up Montserrati, which is the massive mountain that's right next to Bogota, is a must do. You can get the funicular, you can get the cable car, or you can hike it, your choice. I think if you just fly into Bogota though, don't hike it like the next day because the altitude will get you. <laughs> there is of course heaps of amazing street art. If you're walking around the La Candelaria area, you will just come upon it or you can do a tour as well. The other of our favorite things to do is to try the local food and you have to get a yako. Mwah. Amazing. We made a whole video about the food in Bogota. It was pretty good. <laughs> a lot of cheese. <laughs> After Bogota, we went to a small town called Macheta. Actually, we didn't really go to the town. We went to a really, really nice Airbnb that was just outside of the town. It's something that we can pretty comfortably recommend to everyone. If it's available, you should do it. If you like peace and quiet and a really nice place <laughs> to stay. We have said this so many times before, but if you have never done a unique accommodation as a way or form of traveling, you need to try it because they are so relaxing and so just like rejuvenating. Oh, they're just the best. We won't go on about that because we also made a whole video about that one. So. <laughs> but from there, we decided to make our way to one of Colombia's colonial towns, Villa de Leyva. To get to Villa de Leyva, you need to make your way to Tunja, which is like this big bus hub in that sort of area of Colombia. And from there, you can get another bus to v Villa de Leyva. It's pretty easy. You won't find any information about it online, which did stress both <laughs> of us out. But it's one of those things that it does just work out. Yeah, Tunja bus station is one of those ones that's a massive hub. You can get pretty much anywhere in the country from there. Villa de Leva is a relatively small city apart from the city square, which is giant. <laughs> So anywhere you stay within the city bounds is gonna be great. We stayed like five, 10 minute walk away from the center of town at one of my favorite hotels we've stayed at the entire time just because the bed was ridiculously comfortable. It was a really good bed. <laughs> there isn't heaps to do in Villa de Leyva. We happened to be there on a weekend, so we were lucky enough to see the Saturday market. The plaza's obviously a huge thing to see. There is heaps of archeological sites around and of course, a chocolate museum. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> After Villa de Leyva, we were in love with these smaller towns, so we found out that there was another town kind of close by called Barachara, and we had to see it. To get from Villa de Leyva to Barachara, it takes three buses. The first one takes you from Villa de Leyva to Tunja, then you go from Tunja to San Gil, and then from San Gil to Barachara. But be warned, the bus station you get into in San Gil is not the same as you leave from in San Gil. You need to get like a 5,000 peso cab. They'll take you to the other bus station. Again, that sounds like a huge day and like it would be super stressful and all this stuff. It's one of those things that it just works out. Yeah, and it's worth it. It's worth it to see it. Just leave early in the morning. So it's quite a long day. Barachara is gorgeous. It's one of those colonial towns with the cobblestone streets and the two-tone buildings and huge hills in the background. It's actually been named Colombia's most beautiful town. So you have to go see it. There isn't heaps to do there. Barachara literally translates it's a place of rest, so you're gonna be resting while you're there, but it's so worth it to see. That being said, the town square is gorgeous, just to check that out. There is also a lookout that looks over a nearby valley, mm -hmm. which looks awesome too, and the cemetery, of all things. An odd one, but the tombstones within the cemetery are pieces of art. They all represent the deceased's favorite hobbies, their work, their life. So there's things like sewing machines and ukuleles. It's just beautiful. You have to go to Miha restaurant if you're going to Barachara and get the grilled chicken burger. It was one of my favorite meals in all of Colombia and I kind of hate that because it's not a traditional Colombian <laughs> meal, but it was amazing. <laughs> From Barachara, we decided we wanted to get to the Colombian Caribbean coast. That meant that we had to backtrack again to San Gil before taking an overnight bus all the way up to Santa Marta and then on to Palomino. Palomino is tiny. We've said small towns for the last two, but this one is really, really small. It's considered like a hipster town that sits on the coast with not much infrastructure. Very like backpackery beach vibes. Like it's huts, it's street food. It's just so different to anything we had experienced in Colombia up until that point. There's really only one main road in Palomino and all the cool shops are off that one road. Biggest tip is make sure you book a place that has real air conditioning. Sometimes they say it has air conditioning and it's just a really not very good 
fan that's oscillating in the corner. <laughs> the main things to do in Palomino is you can go tubing down a river, you can go on a walk with a bunch of the stray dogs with a dog cafe, or it can be a really good spot to go visit Tayrona National Park, which is one of the things we really regret that we didn't get to do. After Palomino, we caught a bus from the side of the road that took us back to Santa Marta, where we spent a couple of nights. Santa Marta is pretty big and again serves a little bit of a bus hub for the coast. There are so many different networks that connect there and they have an airport, so you can come in and out really easily. A lot of blogs online imply that you should skip Santa Marta or that there isn't that much to do. And they're not wrong, there isn't heaps to do. There's so much beautiful stuff around it. I think that's why everyone tells you to go to Minca, go to Tayrona National Park, go to Palomino. But if you have a day to spare, Santa Marta was beautiful. We had a really nice beer with the sunset. We walked along the Esplanade, they call it the Malecon. And that was the first place we had the menu del dia which we loved. And then it was time to go to Cartagena. Again, getting to Cartagena as a massive tourist hub, there's buses everywhere and they have their own airport too. So no issues whatsoever. This is such a tourist hotspot in Colombia. I think heaps of Americans come here for a holiday. It almost feels like there's one area that just looks like Miami. We stayed in the historic center in Cartagena, but another super popular area for tourists is the Getsemane neighborhood. They're really close together, so you can't really go wrong which one you pick. Cartagena is known for having really, really nice and expensive food. So we were a little bit shocked with how much things were costing in restaurants, but luckily they also had incredible and really cheap street food. It literally started every morning with a cup of fruit and two of these like cheesy bread things and it cost 8,000 cop total and that would fill us up until lunch quite easily. One of the reasons you're probably going to Cartagena is to do the Rosario Islands and we can't recommend this enough. It was such an amazing day. We went with Cartagena Adventures and it was just beautiful seeing all the islands, the crystal clear water. We got to swim with bioluminescent plankton, which was so magical. There's stacks of other things to do in Cartagena. It is a tourist hub, like we said. There's horse drawn carriages rolling over the cobblestone streets. And if you're there at the right time, when the sun's setting, you can grab a beer and watch the sun go down on the fortified wall that they built to keep pirates out. It was a pretty cool place. Just. Be warned, it's not cold. It's really hot. <laughs> Luckily, there's plenty of amazing beaches that you can visit to cool yourself down. We had to get a bit further away from Cartagena though, so we ended up catching an overnight bus from Cartagena all the way to Medellin, which can pretty comfortably be considered the second biggest city in Colombia and one of the main hotspots for entrepreneurs or digital nomads or expats wanting to find a cheaper cost of living. Again, we obviously got there by bus because we're budget travelers, but there is an airport that you can fly in and out of as well. There's a lot of flights going in and out of Medellin. A lot of the time people can skip Bogota and just go straight there. There are three main places to stay in Medellin, the La Candelaria district or the central historic district, an area called Laureles or an area called El Poblado. I'd say El Poblado is the most popular. It's filled with gorgeous Airbnbs and apartments and places to rent. It also feels quite upper class with high rises and expensive restaurants and things like that. The Candelaria or the historical district is a little bit less high class, but you're right in the action. And if you're gonna go into the main central district anyway, you can walk there. And that's where we stayed. The main things to do in Medellin range from like just catching the cable cars around because they use cable cars as just public transport there. You can also do Pablo Escobar tours. I would maybe look into that on your own. We didn't end up booking onto one because we've heard some mixed reviews. I think the main reason people go to Medellin though is to do a workation. You can hire these beautiful Airbnbs that have drinkable water, fast Wi-Fi, and it's just a gorgeous area and you can get all your work done. The other thing to do in Medellin or just out of Medellin is head to Cuitape, which is the next place we went to. Not as accessible as the other big cities because it doesn't have its own airport, but it is only two hours by bus from Medellin. The central town of Cuitape is gorgeous. It is so colorful. It's probably one of the most beautiful towns that we went to for the entire time we were in Colombia. Yeah. Think Encanto and you'll probably get the picture. <laughs> yeah. But one thing that overshadows how beautiful the town is, is the El Pañol rock that people go there to see and to climb, which was incredible. And we had so much fun doing that, but the town's worth a look too. Another thing you can do while you're in Guatapi is stay at a unique accommodation overlooking the man-made lakes. It is just such a beautiful place to stop for a couple of days and take a breath. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can go and see the drowned town. They literally built a dam and drowned an entire town. All you can see is a little church steeple sticking up from a lake. 
Those lakes have become a water sport haven as well. So watch out for the kayaks and jet skis running around. <laughs> After Guatape, we caught a bus back to Medellin and went to Salento, which is literally the town that influenced Encanto. It is such a picturesque, quaint town in the coffee region of Colombia. And the main reason you're gonna go here is to either go on a coffee farm tour or to hike Kokora Valley and see the tallest wax palm trees in the world. Salento being a small town as well, doesn't really matter where you stay, you're always gonna be in walking distance from the town square. We stayed in a hostel called Combi in a private room and it did the job perfectly. Just be wary if you have some mobility issues, maybe confirm where your hotel is because ours was down the bottom of a very steep hill. <laughs> and after the Kokoro hike, a lot of people have mobility issues. <laughs> From Salento, we went to our second last town in Colombia of Cali. Cali is the salsa capital of the world. And I would say if you're into salsa, maybe you wanna visit Cali or if you wanna learn how to salsa dance, Cali is the place to come. Other than that, I think you can skip it. It's just not the safest of places, safest of areas. Out of all of the places we visited in Colombia, it was probably the one we felt the most uneasy. We still went out and stuff, like don't get me wrong, it was just the anxiety was the highest it's ever been. We may have been in a not so good area, but it was an easy stop on our way to get to the Ecuador border. Our final town in Colombia was a tiny border town called Ipiales. And normally I don't think people would stop there, but we would highly recommend it because we saw what has been called the most beautiful building in South America. There is an insane church called Las Lajas there and it's just so beautiful. It makes a stop there worth it by itself. But if you do decide to stay in Ipiales overnight, it means that you can get up early to cross the border, which is probably our final tip. If you're going to Ecuador, get to that border as early as possible. We were there at 7.30 in the morning, I think and I wish we got there earlier because we would have been through instantly, I reckon. There are quite a few places that we missed even though we had six weeks in Colombia and a few of them I regret not going to or they're already on our list for when we come back to Colombia. First one, probably the biggest one is Tayrona National Park. We mentioned it briefly when we we're talking about Palomino. It sits between Palomino and Santa Marta and it is an incredible national park. We just happened to be there when they were closed. <laughs> So if you're planning a trip, it closes three times a year, once in January, once in June, and once in October. Confirm the dates when you're going and make sure it's not during that time. The other thing in that area is the Lost City Trek, which we have heard incredible things about. And we were so close to booking it and going on it, but we just didn't. It just got to a point where it was gonna take four or five days and cost a little bit more money than we thought it would. And we ultimately decided to go and explore other towns instead. But we'll come back, cause I wanna do that. <laughs> I think the final thing in that area is the town of Minka. It's another one that we really wish we did have the time to go and visit, but for whatever reasons there were at the time, we didn't end up going there. <laughs> one of the other places we were a little bit annoyed that we missed was the Tatakoa Desert. We have heard some incredible things about it from pretty much everyone we meet that's been there has said it's unreal. We just didn't go, okay? Jardin is another one of those towns. It's a tiny colonial town that's known for having like Colombian cowboys everywhere and heaps of horses and stuff like that. We've heard it's amazing, but didn't make it. And the final thing I really regret that we didn't do was play Tejo. Which is like a Colombian game with explosives. <laughs> we tried to play it a few times, but just had no luck. We really hope you got something out of this travel guide and it helps you when you plan your trip to come to Colombia. Remember, if you are interested, we do have that Google map available for download that's got everywhere we've been and everything we've eaten and even specific bus terminals that you need to get from place to place. It's a pretty detailed thing. There's 150 locations on it currently and we're still kind of adding to it. So if you need to know where something is, it's probably gonna be on the map, hopefully. <laughs> Our next video we're gonna film is breaking down how much it costs for us to travel six weeks in Colombia. Every dollar we spent. Do, 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 do. Like and subscribe. Should we film that now? Yeah. How do we finish? Like... Click here to watch this next. Isn't that what people do? <laughs> you rule. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? Any Sorry. downloads? Shh. I'm gonna download that clip and send it to mum. Good. So she can see how you treat me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need glasses? <laughs> I say this Half thing. of this video is me just waiting for you to finish laughing. <laughs> Stop having fun. Sorry this for being happy. <laughs> Nailed it, snail fest. <laughs>